earthquakes and volcanic eruptions are frequent reminders of the Earth's innermost secrets. These destructive phenomena result from forces that are at work in the Earth's interior, the tectonic forces. Tectonic forces are responsible for the wide variety in the Earth's landscape. It is these forces that led to the creation of mountains, plateaus, valleys, and oceans. The Earth as we know it now hasn't always been the same. At a very distant past, the present continents of the Earth were united as a single landfall. As a result of tectonic forces, this single supercontinent began breaking up and the fragments drifted apart to form the present continent. Oceans were also formed in the process. This process, which started millions of years ago, still goes on. Man's search for the Earth's innermost secrets is as old as the history of mankind itself. Numerous adventurous sea voyages and strenuous researchers have helped in unveiling these secrets. The realization that continental boundaries could be fitted together as in a jigsaw puzzle was a key to the repository of Earth's inner secrets. In the year 1875, Bland Ford of the Indian Geological Survey noticed a remarkable similarity between the animal species found on the Indian and African continents. These animals, such as scorpions, freshwater fish, etc., could not possibly have crossed the ocean. This led Bland Ford to conclude that at one time, these two land masses had been one. In the year 1910, the German scientist Alfred Wegener put forward the theory of continental drift. He suggested that around 200 million years ago, there existed a single supercontinent and a single great ocean. The supercontinent was named Pangaea. The ocean was named Panthalassa. Pangaea split into Laurasia and Gondwana, separated by a seaway named Tetis. In course of time, Laurasia was broken into two land masses which drifted apart to form North America and Eurasia. Gondwana land in the southern hemisphere drifted apart in course of time, resulting in the formation of the continents of South America, Africa, Peninsular India, and Australia. Alexander Detroit came up with more evidence to support Alfred Wegener's theory. The suggestions presented by Detroit in his Origins of Continents and Oceans, however, did not find acceptance among the scientific community of the day. Wegener's theory had no explanation for the forces that caused the continental drift, and there was no evidence for the drift to have actually taken place along the ocean floors. The theory of plate tectonics overcame the weaknesses in Wegener's hypothesis. This theory could explain almost all the phenomena in the Earth's interior. This theory, formulated by William James Morgan, was a revolution in the history of Earth sciences. Conventional geographic theories were discarded, and geographic textbooks came to be rewritten in the light of the theory of plate tectonics. Earth has three layers, the crust, the mantle, and the core. The core, the innermost layer, is a boiling mass at a depth of about 3,400 kilometers from the surface of the Earth. Radioactive elements and the high temperature 
existing since the formation of the Earth itself are the sources of such high temperature in the core. Due to such high temperatures, the rocks in the innermost portion of the mantle have acquired a semi-liquid state. The outermost part, the crust, is 5 to 65 kilometers thick. Continental crust is thicker than the oceanic crust. The crust and the outer portion of the mantle together, which on an average is 100 kilometers thick, is known as the lithosphere. The portion of the mantle below the lithosphere is known as the asthenosphere. The heated rocks in the Earth's interior rise up as magma, go down on cooling and come up again due to the heat below. The radiation resulting from this process, which has been going on for millions of years, has resulted in the separation and formation of continents. As a result of this process, the oceanic basins get fissured and reconverged. Volcanoes and earthquakes occur. In the 1960s, it was established that the lithosphere which consisted of the crust and the rocks in the outer mantle was constituted of separate plates and the interaction between these plates is the cause of volcanoes and other geological phenomena. This is the theory of plate tectonics. The plate margins were identified based on the clue that the plate boundaries must be areas of high volcanic and seismic activity. The existence of seven major plates and several minor plates has been established. These plates have areas of thousands of square kilometers and comparatively small thicknesses. Alfred Wegener's theory was that the low density continental plates had glided over the oceanic plates of comparatively high density. But actually the plates, including ocean basins, glide over the asthenosphere and drift in different directions. The lithospheric plate movements are of three types. Those that drift away from each other, those that drift towards each other, and those that slide past each other. The diverging or moving apart of the plates occurs mainly in the oceanic regions. When this happens, the molten rock material in the mantle rises up through the fissures developed and thus gets solidified to form oceanic ridges. As a result of this, the oceanic basin spreads towards both sides of the oceanic ridge. This phenomenon is termed oceanic flow spreading and it results in the formation of around two and a half square kilometers of new ocean flow every year. The mid-Atlantic ridge in the Atlantic Ocean is a prominent ocean ridge. With researchers using sound waves and in the light of the magnetic characteristics of old age rocks, several facts connected with the ocean flows and plates were brought to light. The age as well as the thickness of ocean basins increases with the distance from the plate boundaries. St. Alina, Azores and St. Paul Islands are peaks in the mid-Atlantic ridge. In Iceland, the fissures resulting from the formation of ocean ridges are visible even in the continental areas. When continental plates drift apart, drift valleys are formed. Seawater rushes into the gap produced 
and a new sea is formed. The Atlantic Ocean and the Red Sea were formed in this manner. The rift zone in Africa near the Red Sea is known as the Great Rift Valley. In course of time, the rift in this region may develop fully and the African continent may split into pieces. When a continental plate and an oceanic plate converge, the oceanic plate of comparatively a higher relative density sinks beneath the continental plate. The oceanic plate, which starts melting even before it reaches the mesosphere, will emerge as volcanoes at the plate boundaries. The chain of volcanic mountains under the oceans was thus formed. The history of our Earth is etched in its rocks. Rocks, millions of years in age, exist on our Earth. The 420 million year old rock collected from the Narayar Mountains in Australia is the oldest of all the rocks found to date. Pre-Cambric rocks that are 300 million years old are found in Kerala. Nowhere in the ocean basins have rocks older than 180 million years been found. This is because of the sinking of the high-density oceanic plate beneath the low-density continental plate. Deep trenches get formed at oceanic plate boundaries as a result of these processes. At boundaries of plates which slide past each other, neither formation nor destruction of lithosphere takes place. However, tensile forces cause rifts. The San Andrian Fault was formed with the sliding of North American and Pacific plates past each other. Regions where three plate boundaries come together are known as triple junctions. There are more than one triple junctions beneath the ocean. In the continental region, the Alpha Triangle in the Arabian region is the only triple junction. Sometimes two continental plates converge to form a single continent. In this process, sedimentary rocks rise up to form fold mountains. The Himalayas and the Alps are examples of such fold mountains. The Himalayas were formed with the collision of the northwest moving Indian plate and the Eurasian plate at the end of the Cretaceous period. The sedentary rocks which emerged from the Tethys Sea constitutes most of the Himalayas. The Himalayas is one of the youngest mountain ranges. The Aravalli Mountains, Western Ghats, etc., in the Indian subcontinent are around 1500 to 2500 million years old. However, the Himalayas were formed only around 40 million years ago. The Himalayas still experience a slow rate of growth. Millions of years ago, the forest nature was considerably different from what it is today. The forest then consisted of tree-like ferns and cycads. These ferns and cycads got buried under the earth and turned to coal.
These plant species of the Carboniferous period got extinct even before the Jurassic period when continental drift occurred. The fossils of the Glossopteris species, which was abundant in the Carboniferous period, have been found in the Himalayas. Fossils of sea creatures that were common in the Jurassic period, which witnessed continental drift, are found in several areas, including the Himalayas. In the Jurassic period, the Earth abounded with dinosaurs. It is believed that the extinction of dinosaurs came about in the sandstorm and flood that followed Earth's collision with another planetary body. The fossils of dinosaurs have been found in various places, including those in India. Millions of years ago, when the Earth was a single huge continent, a major portion of it was snow covered. The Himalayas, regions of South America and Africa, bear telltale marks of snow melting. It is clear that the deserts of different continents are scattered pieces of a large portion of a continent which was once a huge unified land area. The similarities in the mineral deposits and rocks in the eastern coasts of South America and the western coast of Africa are evidence in favor of the theory of plate tectonics. Central India and even the less quake-prone regions of South India have recently begun experiencing earthquakes. Indian Palagum, Eurasian Palagum, Kutimuti, Himalayam, Undayadai, Nam Manslaki. Ipol Indian Palagatinde Urupagam, Tibetan Adil, Valare Vadakota, Ningi Tirikia. E. Pradesham, Logatinda Melkura, Adava, Roof of the World, Enaria Purana, Pamir Behalia. Ini Indian Palagatin of Vadakota, Sanjirikan, Kadigil. Ade Samia, Indian Palagam. Anudinam, Vistra the Kudi Kudi, Perigeo. Ada Samudra the Ravavan Tinda Faramai, Indian Falagatin de Chile Fangli, Pudia Lido Sphere, Kutichar the Gunde Rikia. Apol Indian Falagatin, Chile Andriya Kremiger and Angalka, Videma individual. Adinda Sujane and Nonam Australia Mudal Pakistan Vere Nilna Uru Makril. Pugamba Kendrangalde Uru Nira Rumad. ത്തിട്ടുള്ളതായി Vadakanjilum, Undaitula Puam Bungal, E. Andriga Kremigar and Angalade, Uru Parani the Falaman, Namuka Venselaka, Oro de Shangarin Durum, Kerala Telmatramala, Indiude, Padinar and Diretum, Puam Bungalade, Avarti, Kudi Kudi Veran, Lasadiza, Valare Kudalan, Anadi Vidura Bavil, Pacific in Jutum, Ula Megale Vole, Puam Bungalum, Aganivoradangal. Ula Urimekali, Indian Mahasamudra, Marikuda Yila. The Earth's phase goes on changing continuously. Fifty million years hence, the continents shall not be the same. The Indian subcontinent will move to join the northward drifting Australia. African continent will split into two separate continents with the completion of the split at the African Drift Valley. 
a new sea will form in between. The expansion of the Mid-Atlantic Ridge will cause Greenland to split into fragments. Mountains and oceans will undergo drastic changes. New mountains and oceans will be formed. The only question is whether mankind would remain on the face of the earth then to witness these changes.